since the goal of chess is to checkmate your opponent's king, one of the best ways to achieve checkmate faster is by learning mating patterns. Mating pattern is a recognizable arrangement of pieces that guarantees to deliver checkmate with the right sequence of moves. The more patterns you know, the higher your chances of winning in chess. Look at this example. I quickly recognize that the king on c5 has a control over b5, b4, and b6. There are other squares too, like the ones I highlight with the arrow. So, putting my queen on b4 is instant checkmate since it is protected by the king. This king cannot capture, hence, the king is checkmated. In this video, I will walk you through 77 positions to get you equipped with mating patterns. Let's start with this. In this position, white has a checkmate sequence. In the variation, white needs to start with 9 to e7 check. King to h8, queen takes the pawn on h7 check. After king takes, rook to h1 is checkmate. If you look at this position carefully, the knight is strong, defending against the square that would have enabled the king run or escape. However, in this position, the knight and the rook are the star players here. So take note of this pattern because you might encounter them from your game. So from the beginning, this is what we had. So we know that we need to open up this file. The knight needs to be here and the rook needs to be here. So the first move, second move and the third move came in simultaneously. This kind of pattern is called the Anastasia mate. Let's take a look at it in a different view. In this position, we have a little layer higher than the first example and we need to make a checkmate. The knight is already positioned, so the rook needs to come over to e8 to make checkmate, but the knight is defending that square. The variation here to win this position starts with queen to h8 check. This move threatens to checkmate, however the knight can block the check. So, queen takes the knight, luring the king into g8. Rook to e8 is checkmate. Very similar to the first example. So, take note of the pattern. The knight cuts out this square. The rook is delivering the checkmate. This is another pattern we need to consider in this video. In this position, the bishop is doing a very strong job, restricting the king from having any mobility and with a nice check from the rook on the h file, if the file is open, you can have a checkmate. So to attain that position, I need to start with knight to g6 with check. Only move, pawn takes, rook to h1 is checkmate. This is known as the Greco's mate. In this next example, this bishop is doing a good job covering here. So with a nice check along this h file, I'm going to have a checkmate. However, a silent move like queen to j6 is doing well because the threat is to enter the square well defended by the knight and make a checkmate. If black eliminates this knight with pawn takes on g5, queen to h5 is checkmate. Just take note, the bishop is the strong force here covering this square. Why the queen? plays a crucial role of giving checkmate. Here we have a similar theme to what we've studied. However, this comes with a sacrifice. In this position, the king is well defended. However, to penetrate to the back rank, we need to lure the king first with queen takes the rook on f8. This comes with check. A sacrifice, a very meaningful sacrifice of the queen. This move forces the king to take on f8. 
bishop to h6 is checked king to g8 rook to e8 is checkmate this pattern is a different setup of the Greco's mate also most of the variations in this video are a series of forcing moves that end up giving white the game in chess you must understand that time is very important so you must find a way to achieve checkmate in a very fast and shorter timing this is a position where the bishop is also strong cutting the king from having access to this square to open up this file entirely by removing this pawn i need to sacrifice the rook king takes queen to h5 is checkmate in this position we are going to have a different pattern from the gray coast mate so that pattern starts with knight to f6 check the bishop cannot take because the bishop is pinned by the rook to the king so king to h8 is okay however how can we get the checkmate the checkmate comes in by deflecting the bishop with queen to h6 check bishop takes rook storms into h7 this is checkmate take note of this pattern properly i think this is the beginning of your transformation from beginners to expert when you can successfully make checkmate with the rook and the knight you should be proud of yourself this is quite straightforward this pattern starts with rook to d8 check king to g7 rook to g8 this mating pattern is known as the hook mate in the sense that we have the knight and the rook giving a checkmate however the knight must be protected this example buttresses the point the knight is protected in this case by the bishop so rook to d8 check king to g7 rook to g8 is checkmate in this position the threat is to pick up this knight by these two deadly rooks However, white has sequence of moves that wins the game in couple of three moves. And it starts with 9 to g7 check. The role of the king in this situation is very crucial because we are going to see why the king is important on f6. King to d8 trying to run away. There is 9 to e6 check. The move defends the rook and also checks the king. King to e8. Rook to e7 is checkmate. That is why this king is strong here on f6 because it's also a fighting piece in the end game. Try to activate your king. This pattern is known as the Vukovic mate. Look at this example to buttress the point. There is need to keep the king on a key square f6. In this position, black has to move to check to become a queen. So with tempo king to e5, f2, king to f6, after queen comes in, rook to e7 is checkmate. The knowledge of this pattern enables you not to panic. So with adequate calculation, we need just two moves to get to this square. Whatever black chooses to play here, we have a checkmate in one in the next move. A very popular team every beginner must take note of. This one is a smoothed mate performed by the knight. So, knight to f7 check starts the sequence. King to g8, knight to h6 check. A deadly double attack, a check from the queen, a check from the knight. If king moves to f8, queen goes to f7 is checkmate. However, king goes in. You'll be puzzled on how to continue. This video is right here for you. See, sacrifice the queen here on g8 square. The king cannot take because it is defended by the knight. So rook takes, knight goes back to f7, and this is a smoother checkmate. To buttress the idea on smoother checkmate, let's look at this variation. Queen takes the pawn on f7 with check, king to h8. Queen to g8 check. It is possible to play the queen here because it is defended by the bishop. Once rook takes, knight to f7 is checkmate. This is a different position but similar approach, similar idea. In this case, the white pieces 
are performing the role of restricting the black king. The bishop covers h7, knight covers h7, knight covers f5. However, we need the knight to move, so the bishop is a good piece here, doing a very good job. Knight f7 check starts the winning variation here. King to g8, knight to h6, double check. King moves here, queen comes in here to give a checkmate. However, king goes to h8, queen to g8, rook takes on g8, knight to f7 is checkmate. This kind of mate is similar or is connected to the smoothed mate, but this case is called the suffocation mate. This one, there is a piece covering that flight square. The king is suffocating, not smoother this time around. In the smoothed mate, there is a black piece here, sometimes the knight or the pawn. It might be a bishop or a queen. For this case, it is the white piece is doing the job. So, we have a similar case of the suffocation mate, which starts with queen to h6. The threat is to pick up this pawn and give a checkmate, temporarily stops the threat. But knight to h6 checkmate comes in after all. Since this bishop is strong, playing a strong role covering these dark squares, knight comes in and giving a checkmate. So, increasing the difficulty so as to have different variation and different scenario where the idea of the pattern can be can be administered. I have this position connected with suffocation mate. Ninth in this case defends this square. I need this ninth to come here and give a checkmate. So I need to remove the defender with this queen. That is the concept. The queen takes the ninth, pawn takes, nine to eight six comes in and we have a checkmate, well delivered by the knight. So, another variant of suffocation mate is this. This time around, the checkmate will be given by the bishop. So, knight to f6 comes in, utilizing the knowledge of the pin on the e file against the king. Knight was able to get to f6. So, this is check. And knight covers this square. The pawn cannot take, so king has to move. Bishop to h6 comes in and give the final blow. This is a checkmate. One strong pattern you should know. In this position, black has a threat on the king. The bishop is also threatening this rook and the queen. However, white has a breakthrough. That is simply 9 to f7 check. 9 to f7 check can give a checkmate if there was no defender of that square. So this knight is disturbing white from achieving checkmate. Therefore, I have to eliminate that knight with queen. This comes with check. Queen takes. 9 to f7 is checkmate. This is called a corner's mate. So, the knight and the rook cuts out the king in a corner. This checkmate is possible because there is a piece standing in front of the king, preventing its mobility. This is another position here. This is a famous position that leads to the Morphe's mate, that starts with rook takes the pawn on g7 with check. Defended by the bishop, the rook can take that pawn successfully. King moves. We have to apply wisdom, common sense, because if I take this rook away right away, this pawn comes down and block the check. So let me eliminate this pawn first. That comes with check. King moves here, rook to g7 again. King goes in. So anywhere you put the rook right away, a check will come up from the bishop. Rook blocks, bishop takes the rook, and this is checkmate. This is an advanced or modified version of the Morphe's mate. This is the Pillsbury's mate. In this case, the bishop can be captured. So we have to apply common sense in a specific move when creating the winning variation. By now, you should know this solution start with rook takes the pawn on g7 will check. King moves to h8. If 
Rook takes this pawn right away. From here, we take the pawn. Then the knight takes this bishop. And that comes with check to the king. And that is a big problem. So we have to create a double attack. Sacrificing this rook to lure the king into g8. So that rook to g1 can come in. And this is checkmate. To increase the difficulty of the Pillsbury's mate. I have this position where rook to g1 check comes in first. King to h8. Bishop to g7 check. King to g8, bishop takes the pawn on f6, checkmate, depriving this king from going back to h8. The Oprah's mate must be studied because the Oprah's mate was named after a German chess player. So you enjoy learning a lot of culture, a lot of languages in chess. This time around, the Oprah's mate is a checkmate that happens with the rook and the bishop but how how do you achieve this i need to clear this part the hit file so a sacrifice needs to be made queen takes the pawn is deadly because king takes rook to h4 check king to g8 rook to h8 is checkmate this is a layer to the opera's mate in this case we have a checkmate that can happen when the rook gets to h8 but how there's a defender blocking that square we need to deflect that knight queen to b8 does the work perfectly knight 6 rook to d8 is checkmate in this case not to waste much time queen to h8 check king takes rook to h3 check king to g8 rook to h8 is checkmate this is a pattern in the oprah's mate this Oprah's mate, we have a checkmate with the bishop, and that is with bishop to d8. This bishop is defended by the rook on d1, so coming here to give a checkmate to the king is safe. In a position like this, the king is appearing safe. A move like this gets white into trouble, where black takes this pawn with check and start tormenting the king. So we need a forcing sequence of moves that wins this game for white. And that variation starts with rook to f8. Learn the king to take so that the queen can go to f7, defended by the pawn to give a checkmate. This kind of pattern is known as the lowly mate. The lowly mate has many variants. Look at this one. The knight is very strong. However, a good sacrifice with the rook makes sense. King moves to f8. Rook goes over to the back rank is checkmate. It is defended by the queen. So if pawn takes, queen takes pawn with check. King moves. This is check. Supported by this pawn, this check is possible. So king moves. Queen to e7 is checkmate. In Demiano's mate, there is a modification to the lowly's mate. This time around, the rook goes over to h8, luring the king to take. Queen to h5 comes with check. King moves. Queen to h7 is checkmate. This is not possible if the pawn is not on g6. However, we can also have a bishop in cases like this. To further explain the Damiano's mate, this position is set up to give you better insight. If you go with queen to h7 right away, you lose the chances to win this game the next two moves. Because the queen picks up the queen, pawn takes, king takes, and there's a trouble. Black has two powerful rooks. So to end this game in a grand style, we have to start with a sacrifice. Rook to f8, check. Queen takes, the king cannot take. So. Queen to h7 is checkmate. In the max lunge mate, the bishop is doing a very strong work here, cutting out this king from g8. The king has this escape square. So how do we achieve checkmate with series of moves here? I would love to introduce to you the powerful queen to e8 check. If you see this move, you are doing wonderfully well. However, the next couple of moves are the best move in this situation. 
King had this escape square. Now there's a new puzzle to solve. How do you achieve the winning variation from here? Fine. The queen on e8 is performing a good role, cutting out these squares, the diagonal from the king, especially here, g6. Bishop to g8 check. King to h8. Bishop to f7 check. King to h7. Queen to g8 is checkmate. Take note of how I moved the bishop more than once. I moved the bishop to different positions till I got my checkmate. This position is quite puzzling. It makes you uncover some secret tactical idea, which is namely a pin. You see, in this case, we're going to take note of a pin pawn on g7. The bishop is pinned also from the queen. It cannot move. It deprives the bishop from its mobility. But that does not limit the bishop's strength on the long range to the king, especially holding this pawn on g7 to the king. So this checkmate is now clear to you because the queen takes this pawn. The pawn is harmless to the queen. This is check. King needs to move. Queen takes the pawn on g7 is checkmate. In this case, we need to keep in mind that sacrificing the rook drags the king to h8, queen to h7 gives checkmate. This is another layer also, just like what we saw earlier. Luring the king, king takes, this pawn is now pinned. So with this check, king moves, queen takes pawn, this is checkmate. Let me leave you to work out this particular position in the next couple of moves. How do you win from here? Fine. If you spot bishop to e6 check, you are correct. This is the beginning of the variation. Because king to h8 is okay. But queen to f6 check storms in. See, if bishop blocks right away, then queen to h4 check. Only move. Bishop blocks, queen takes bishop, is checkmate. However, in this position, king to h7, queen to f7 check, bishop to g7 blocking, bishop to f5 check, king to h8, queen to h5 check, king to g8, bishop to e6 check, king to f8, queen to f7 is checkmate. Just see the movement. We started from here. There was this move here, here, here. You see, see the pattern. Every move came with check, with the right positioning. This is how to end the game in a grand style. When if, even when you are done with materials, black is just wicked here. He was threatening checkmate in one, so we must find that sequence. In this position, there's a big threat on this board. The threat is to pick up the queen or the bishop, and that comes with check if rook picks up the bishop. So, in this position, it is white to play. However, if white plays something not too strong, black would take advantage of this game as fast as possible. The rook here pin the bishop to the king. It also threatens to capture the queen. So, what do you think white can do to escape this critical situation? So white must find queen to f8 check, king to e6, queen to d6 check, king to f7, queen to e7 check, king to g8, queen to f8 is checkmate. This is another popular checkmate pattern where bishop starts the variation. Bishop to h7 check, king to h8, bishop to g6, king to g8, queen to h7 check, king to f8, queen takes pawn on f7 is checkmate. In a position like this, we must find queen to d8 check first. King to g7, then queen to h8 is checkmate. This is an example of a mating pattern called 
the dovetail mate. Sometimes most people call it cosius mate. So let's look at a variation different from the previous one. How can we get a kind of checkmate in this position? We want to create a scenario where the queen comes here and makes a checkmate. This dovetail mate happens when the opponent king has the diagonal to escape to, but the white piece, like the queen, can cover that diagonal by giving a check from a square defended by the piece, sometimes a pawn or a king or a rook, any of the pieces, then we can have a checkmate. Take a look at the shape. It's in a square-like shape. The king is in the center. The queen is in one side of the square giving that check, whereas the flight squares for the king are covered by its own pieces, like this. So, this queen is defending that square. How do we deflect the queen away from c6? We must find rook to a4. Queen takes, queen to c3 is checkmate. This is another variant of an example that leads to dovetail mate. How do we achieve this? Bishop to f7 check is the winning move here. King to h7, bishop to g6, luring the king. King takes, queen to f5 is checkmate. In this position, we need to cut out the king with our own pieces such as the knight. So the move is knight to f6 with check. King cannot go to the diagonals now because the queen covers that diagonal. So, let's say king wants to move. The knight cuts out this square and that square is under check from the knight. Only square is this square because this particular rank is covered by the queen standing here. So queen to c3 is a checkmate. Queen covers squares like this. Here, here, the knight covers this square, knight covers here, and the queen is powerful on the diagonal, covering series of squares on the diagonal, well defended by this pawn. In this case, bishop to c6 check, king to d4, queen to c3 is checkmate. This can happen anywhere on the chessboard. A modified version of the dovetail mate is the swallow's mate. This swallow's tail mate happens when we have this situation in a different shape. The swallowtail's mate is very similar to the dovetail mate. Check this out. Queen to d8 check first. King to g7. The king is escaping. Where queen to h8 check comes up. King to g6. Queen to h6 is checkmate. In the swallow's tail mate, modified version from the dovetail mate, the queen is in the center, but in the dovetail mate, the queen stands at the side, giving a check from the adjacent diagonal. In this case, in the swallow's tail mate, the queen is giving a check from the adjacent horizontal or vertical, like you can see in this case. This is an example to further elaborate on the swallow's tail mate. I need a checkmate to happen here. The queen is covering this rank, the seventh rank. However, I need to lure the king to somewhere here with the rook sacrifice. So king takes, queen comes to e4, is checkmate. See this one, it's just a modified version of the dovetail mate. Feel free to pause this video and try to solve this by yourself. By now, you should be able to spot bishop to e6 check. Rook takes, queen to g7, is checkmate. This is a nice one. This particular checkmate pattern should be very easy to remember because queen to g7 starts the winning variation. This comes with check. Knight takes the queen. Knight to h6 check. King to h8. Pawn takes the knight on g7 is checkmate. This is known as the David and Goliath mate where the pawn is very strong, defended by this bishop on b2. Another version of the pattern to modify 
the understanding of David and Goliath's mate. Queen takes the pawn on f7 with check. That is the pawn, preventing our pawn from coming up here to give a checkmate. Immediately, immediately the rook takes the queen. g6 gives a checkmate. These patterns I show to you are easy for me because I have studied. So I will employ you to take this video and study every pattern I show you in this video. Sometimes to get to a checkmate position or to get to your desired checkmate idea, you need to know some basic tips. How to calculate a position is one of them. In this case, a king that is trapped with a simple check can be checkmated. Rook to h4 is the start of this variation in this position. Bishop takes on h4, g4 is checkmate. This was made possible from here by simple calculations. Where can the king go to? The king can actually go here, but the bishop is protecting that square. So this square is out of it. The rook covers this long file. So the king cannot come here or here or even here. We have two rooks working on that, this rank here and this file. Then here also covered by the rook and the pawn. So you see the king is already in trouble. So we just need to administer the right check to lead us to checkmate. I know that to give a checkmate here, this pawn needs to get to g4. So I need to block this escape square in my mind when I visualized it. This was the square stopping my variation. So I need to block it. That is why that is why rook to h4 comes up. This is a forcing move. This move on its own without this bishop here is checkmate because this rook is protected by the pawn. So since the bishop is there, taking this rook would help me block this square. In this case, g4 comes in and I have a checkmate. When you study how to calculate a position, these patterns will be easier to calculate and easier to remember. Look at this. Feel free to pause this video and try to figure out a variation that wins the game here. However, queen to g6 is a winning variation. Why? I want to open up this rank here and give a checkmate with the pawn. So in Davis and Goliath checkmate, the pawn is the final striking force. So pawn takes, pawn to h7 is checkmate. I know in this position, some of you might be thinking we can have another variation with this queen to j2 check. But you should have in the mind that when calculating correctly, the king can run to this square. And now we can now win a piece, probably with this check, a discovered check, rook takes, and we take the queen. But checkmate is the ultimate. So you calculate in your variation for possible checkmate ideas first before looking for material advantage. This one is connected to what we are studying currently. So queen to g8 check, luring the king to take the queen on g8, h7 is checkmate. In this position, what do you do? You can pause this video and try to figure out the winning move from here. However, g4 is simply winning. After rook takes on b3, g5 is checkmate. This position is very common when dealing with the two bishops mate. So I'm going to show you how to attain the two bishops mate here. This can happen when we sacrifice the queen on c6. Pawn takes to open up this diagonal so that the bishop can come there and give a checkmate. This checkmate is called the Bowden Smith. Sometimes the sacrifice that happens here might be a rook sacrifice or a knight. So provided that we can have access to this light square diagonal from here, then we are good to go. That means every variation you see in your head that gets you this position here, when this dark square bishop covers this dark squares, giving you room to this bishop coming here to give a checkmate. To buttress the point of the Bowden Smith, look at this position. What do we need to do? What needs to fall out 
in this position what do we need to eliminate and where do we need to open correct you need to open the light squares however the pawn is um doing a very good job this one is defending this so we need this pawn to live here forcing although the queen can block but you see what i'm seeing is clear bishop is there queen can take and that is checkmate so let's say the pawn takes bishop comes in and this is checkmate this is a checkmate pattern where queen to this is check starts in the winning variation check this out if the king moves inside obviously there is check from here bishop blocks queen takes the bishop we have a checkmate since the flight square is covered by this bishop however king to e8 comes up bishop to d7 check king to d8 bishop to b5 check king to c8 bishop to a6 is checkmate what's a bishop move in this position we want to make a checkmate and there's no queen on this board there's no rook on this board we have two knights the knights are closer to the king well the bishop is supporting the knight from this distance here so how do we coordinate the pieces to make a checkmate by now you should have seen it knight to f6 check starts the winning variation so if we put knight here we check this square is covered by the knight king has to move to somewhere else this is covered by the bishop so king has to go inside king goes to h8 do not take this rook it looks yummy however you have something better with 9 to g6 and this is checkmate just like what we've studied earlier we need to create this scenario well queen to g7 lures this knight away from defending this square so 9 6 9 to f6 is checkmate so far so good this position from the first example and this one second example deals with the double knight mate so you see two knights on the board just find how to cook up checkmate with the two knights provided that there are support from other pieces especially when we have a bishop from a long range like the first example the bishop was here and now this queen is here on c3 on this long range so you can cook up a variation in your mind to get to checkmate as fast as possible in this case there are no knights rather we have the bishops so let's see how we can make checkmate with the bishops Queen to d4 check. Bishop takes the queen. Bishop takes on d4 is checkmate. This is possible because we have the black king already at the corner of the board and it's placed on the dark squares. So don't be deceived. This might look very harder to achieve from a certain position. But knowing this, but knowing this from here, lessen the burden in your mind to get to your final result. So sacrificing the queen was part of the plan all along so that we can attain a checkmate position that wins the game for you the double bishop mate extends to this example however rook to c8 check bishop blocks bishop to d4 is checkmate this is another example sacrifice the queen on d4 pawn takes bishop takes on d4 check queen blocks bishop takes the queen and this is checkmate the double bishop the double bishop mate idea still applies to a position like this we have many pieces in this case you must find a breakthrough for white however the rook pins this pawn to the king the pawn here can be taken by this queen so as to open this light square diagonal so queen takes the pawn on d5 what does it do it lures the king bishop to b3 gives a checkmate in this position if this queen can get to this square then we have a checkmate so what do we do in this we also have a checkmate with the light square bishop if it can get here so we have to sacrifice something to get to a specific position this is a pattern that you must understand carefully so that not to make mistake and you now feel bad in losing the game in chess like i said earlier we must work with time find a way to make your idea come to reality on the chessboard in a shorter time so 
Queen to h5 leads the way here. If pawn doesn't take and queen takes this bishop, then queen to h7 is checkmate, defended by the ninth. This is a combination of force between the ninth and the queen. However, pawn takes dears white to prove what he has to do and white needs to balance this game prove himself by playing bishop to h7 check this leads to the black bones mate this is another example that further explains the black bones mate in a hurry most players would see this move so that to align with the bishop to give a checkmate here or here perhaps this sacrifice with the queen will shock your opponent pawn takes what do you see 986 is checkmate this is called the blind swine mate i'll show you how this happens with the two rooks on the seventh rank supporting each other so as to attain this mate and this checkmate is possible because there is a piece here especially this rook if it's a ninth this mate will not be possible probably there will be a sacrifice to remove that ninth and play something else there perhaps we have the rook let's see how we make this checkmate possible rook takes the pawn on g7 with check king to h8 rook takes the pawn on h7 with check king to g8 rook on a to g7 is checkmate in the blind swine mate two rooks are needed sometimes it might be a queen so let's check out this other idea this particular position comes with wisdom and you must understand this sacrificing pieces all along helps you get better insight in chess so how do we attain checkmate here in this set of checkmate the rook goes to the f8 square with check queen takes rook takes again the rook takes and we have queen takes on g8 and this is checkmate if you pay attention very well there was a checkmate that has this setup set up in the center of the board good if you remember that checkmate pattern leave a comment in the comment section below with a time with a time stamp to this position thank you this is one of the earliest kind of checkmate that every beginner will stumble upon when he starts playing chess this is exploring the weakness of the background this comes with utilizing the strength of the two rooks where rook to d8 check comes up rook takes rook takes and this is a checkmate no too much explanation here this will help you as a player to recognize this pattern and make a checkmate faster and also in your games learn to free out spaces when you castle so that you can have breathing spaces for your king to escape this kind of awkward situation for another layer connected to the background mate this comes with the sacrifice of the queen on f7 with check if the rook takes rook to c8 is checkmate as the bishop now pins the rook to the king so the rook cannot block this check another layer to the back rank mate we have this how do we achieve mates here knight to f7 check comes up king to g8 knight to d8 comes up this is an open check to the king so king must move to h8 rook to f8 is checkmate here we have a position connected to the back rank mate what do you do from here and how do we proceed feel free to pause this video and try to figure out the winning move for for white here if we spot queen to e4 you are absolutely right in this position is either black loses this knight or loses this queen or loses the game so black must choose one black cannot keep defending the whole pieces so let's say for example if black tries to defend the knight with this silent move b8 queen takes the knight with the threat of queen takes rook to d8 is checkmate exploring the weakness of the black rank so what to do let's just keep in mind that it's up to black to respond here perhaps the threat is still clear if black plays this then we can just pick up this knight in fact i think i'm making a mistake here let me just pick up the queen 
<laughs> and the game can continue from here in a grand style. This position is quite obvious that black is threatening to bring in a queen into the game in the next few moves. You see, that's a strong threat because this queen alone cannot do it. Although this queen can be captured with a move like check, king moves, check again, or let's say here, and if the king moves out of the way, back or here, black will just pick up the white queen. However, this pattern makes us win in a grand style. Check this out. Queen to h4, check. King to c5. Rook to g5, check. King to d6. Queen to h6, check. King to e7. Rook to g7, check. King to f8. Queen to h8 is checkmate. In this video, this particular pattern is called the lone mower mate. If you check my other videos, I call it the staircase mate or ladder mate. Whichever of the three you remember, just study this position. Very elementary and very effective. The lone mower's mate has different variants and has a lot of application. However, we need to get familiar with the pattern so as to administer it well. In this case, I need to open up the h-file with a queen sacrifice. So, queen takes the pawn, king takes, any of the rooks you use is checkmate. So, let's use this one, rook to h2, we have checkmate here. Another example to buttress the idea around the lone mower's mate. Queen to f6 is check. A deflection, queen needs to leave. So, queen takes, rook to h2 check, king blocks, rook takes the queen checkmate a lot of idea is needed to understand carefully what ideas you are trying to portray in the long moors mate there are series of variants that we need to learn so this example helps us buttress ideas around it here how can i connect my pieces to give a checkmate i need to free up this file for the rook so i need to remove this bishop here but systematically something strong and forcing that is why bishop to h7 check comes up. King moves. King can move. However, I'll just have my checkmate in the next move. But let's go with rook takes the bishop instead. Threatening to pick up my queen. So rook to c8 anyways is still checkmate. This comes with the knowledge of this meeting pattern. This kind of pattern happens when rook to f8 comes with check. Protected by the queen. The rook can go there. King to g7. Queen to f6 is checkmate. This kind of pattern is known as the triangle mate. We have carefully put the king in a, in a triangle from the queen, defended by the rook. Look at another example. This is very common, and I think this setup would broaden your understanding of the triangle mate. This star will rook to f3 check. The rook, the queen, forms a triangle. While defended by the queen, the rook can go to f3. King to g4, queen to h3 check. King to g5, here comes another triangle. See the shape. King to g6, queen to h5 check. King to g7, rook to f7 check. King to g8, queen to h7, checkmate. In this position, we have to make a checkmate with the queen and the rook. However, the rook is the closest piece to start the winning variation with. So, rook to d8 check. King to h7, rook to h8 is checkmate. This is called the kill box mate. The queen is just stationary at this point. With the mobility of the rook, systematically we can have a checkmate while keeping the king in a box covered by these spaces. And now the rook comes in and makes in this checkmate. So, there are some checkmates that we can't avoid learning. That is the fool's mate. This starts with f3, e6, g4, 
queen to h4 is checkmate. This is the fool's mate. Obviously, some people have fallen for this, so it is worth noting that you should also know this particular checkmate pattern. This is the scholar's mate. We start with e4, black plays e5, queen to h5. This goes against the principle of developing the minor pieces first before the queen as early as move 2. So, for you to get note of why this queen is developed is to pay attention to the f7 square. With 9 to c6, bishop to c4. Bishop joins forces with this queen to pressurize f7. If black did not note this and play 9 to f6, queen takes the pawn on f7 is checkmate. This is the scholar's mate. However, this particular checkmate has different variations. There are sometimes the queen will administer checkmate from f3. So that is a study in another video. However, I've introduced to you the scholar's mate. In this video, this is the last position we are going to take a look at. And the journey so far has been wonderful. Thank you for staying to this position. In this position, we have a wonderful resource by taking the knight on e5. Because by taking this knight on e5, we offer the queen here on d1. So if black takes the queen, being happy, the happiness is short because bishop to bishop takes the pawn on f7 is checked. King to e7, knight to d5 is checkmate. 